Hi everyone, today I'm back with a new video showing you the Ultimate Machine 2.1 template for Cubase. I've been quite busy for a while, um, so I haven't been able to upload any video, but I always try to respond to the comments in the videos. I really appreciate that people are watching my videos, so, so I always try to respond whenever I can. Um, now in the previous videos I have shown you how you can load machine 2.1 in QAs without getting that awful MIDI feedback loop. I've also shown you how you can load up multiple kits as you can see I have done here. I have 15 kits. But this video is going to be a little bit different because this video is going to be for those of you who are more familiar with the Cubase key editor than the actual machine um, input editor or whatever you call it uh, me for instance i'm i'm a lot more comfortable with the key editor inside cubase because i've used it for a long time but i also like machine 2.1 um, especially if you compare it to other uh, other drum machines groove agent for example machine 2.1 is a lot better but i just don't like the the input of machine to it, it, the, the the key editor in Cubase has a lot of advantages if you if you explore the the advanced options you have inside Cubase. So this video is going to be for those of you who are familiar with the key editor in Cubase and want to use the key editor uh, even when you're using machine two. Now, usually, if you want to record something inside Cubase uh, with machine, you would make a MIDI track and you would hit the record button and you would just input whatever you want on the, uh, the machine hardware. Just recorded something silly now. Um, by default, you are going to record all of the pads or all of the sounds loaded in one kit. So if I open a key editor, just close this one and zoom out a little bit. You can see that I have recorded uh, two sounds now. I was only playing two sounds, so there's nothing more to, to record. But let's say you want to have, let's say you want to have multiple uh, tracks. Just make three of them. And let's say you want to record the kick on this track and you want to have the snare on this track and you want to have, for example, the hi-hat on the, the third track. Um, there is a way to do that and I have already done it in this template. I have done it for all of the 240 tracks in this template. Um, so if I record enable all of the kits, uh, sorry, all of the tracks for the first kit in machine, and I hit the record button. You can see that it records separately. So if I open the MIDI on the first track, it should be the kick drum. So as you can see, it's only recorded the kick drum on the first track. And if I open the second track, voila, it has only recorded the clap. So this is the same for all of the tracks in this project file. Um, and I'll just show you real quick uh, how I have managed to do this in case you want to make your own templates. You don't like mine. Well, personally, I like to make everything myself because if I do it myself, uh, I'll know if there is a problem, I'll know why, or it's easier to find out, and I like to have things my way. So I'll show you how, how you can do it. Well, the whole magic is in the input, input transformer. So if you open the input transformer and set it to local, that means it's only going to affect uh, the MIDI track that you have selected. If you go to global, it's going to affect all of the MIDI tracks. So I've set it to local. And the settings you can see here means that it's going to filter out all MIDI notes except MIDI note C3. And C3 
is pads one on mished on the machine hardware and if i go to the next track open the input transform again you can see that this one is set to c sharp three so this one is going to re uh, filter out all of the notes except c sharp three and that's how you can record separate uh, sounds on separate MIDI tracks. It makes it a lot easier if you are if you're playing a, a standard four bar beat it's not going to be a huge difference but if you are playing something really advanced and you want to just edit let's say you have you have a just just like a, a crazy hi-hat going on and you want to only edit the hi-hat it would be a little bit difficult if you had 16 notes inside a key editor. Um, just try to illustrate while I'm talking now. Let's say, let's say your key editor looks like this. It's like notes all over and you just want to edit the hi-hat. Well, first of all, you have to find the hi-hat. You have to select just the hi-hat and then do whatever you want with it. Um, at least to me that is a bit inconvenient so this method is a lot easier if you if you want to have a template that will speed up your creativity while you're recording I'm gonna make uh, the Cubase template available as a download in the description below the video I'm also gonna make the machine uh, projects file available as a download if you download it i would of course appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel or at least rate or comment if you are going to use the the preset the, that you have downloaded i'll just have to show you real quick how it works so of course if you want to import any sounds click on a kit you click on a sound you can drag and drop or you can use um, the, the browser option if you if you would like to use that um, I personally don't so I'm gonna close it but there is one really important thing that you have to remember and that is when you are going to record well first of all record on your tracks uh, whichever you want to record on and then you have to select the last kit in machine the one called MIDI uh, because as I have explained in the previous videos this track is gonna be uh, is gonna make you able to record in MIDI inside Cubase so if you select let's say you want to record on kit 14 you should never select kit 14 when you're going to record select MIDI instead and then go down to number 14 in Cubase this one record arm it and then record whatever you want so it's just really important that uh, I say that now because I know people are probably gonna forget it I forget it sometimes so please remember to have MIDI selected and then you'll be fine so that's it for the video. If you have any questions, just leave it in the comments. And if you have any video requests, I would love to hear them. I always assume that you have Googled your problem, if there is one, uh, and searched YouTube for a solution. If you've done all that, then please make a comment about it and I'll see what I can do. I can do videos about basically anything Cubase or Native Instruments related. And until then, have a great time please subscribe, comment, or rate the video. Until next time, have a great day. Bye.